got back from Kuwait, I think September the, I don't know, 7th or something like that. Mm -hmm. September 11th. And so, you know, I'm there at Fort Bragg and at some point the commander said, Hey, I know you guys are going to do the, the long walk in, in October, but, uh, do you want to be part of the second wave of guys going to Afghanistan? I'm like, yep. I don't know where Afghanistan is at, but yeah, I want to go. Right. And so <laughs> back to A. Martins, uh, A. Martins and I, we both went to Afghanistan together in 2001. I think it was late October, November, I think November, 2001, we went over to Afghanistan. Okay. So, so Abe and I, we go way back as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great dude. So tell me about that. Tell me about that deployment. How was that first deployment for you? I mean, I know a lot of guys have different experiences on that initial push or what, whatever your initial push was to, you know, after the towers came down, I mean, it was kind of, we were all, there was like a real visceral kind of a rage that we all had. I mean, tell me, so tell me about your, your initial deployment over there. Yeah, you know how we talk about a lot of guys talk talk noise until it's time to, to that, right? I want to do this, don't want to do that, you know. And you know, we used to sing those Jodies, anybody, somebody start a war. Right. And so right. I was excited, you know, you don't want to practice football and not to get to play in a football game. Sure. Right. And so now it's now it's go time. Uh, I think for me, uh expectations were set by my uh now father in law and my uncle. So my uncle, he was a Vietnam vet, uh, quarter calf, Mortarman, Purple Heart recipient, uh, very familiar with close air support, call a lot of calves as a army person oh, and nice. come back to tours. And then also my father-in-law, you know, and it, they respect me being in the military and, you know, what I did is attack P, but it was still a wall there. Both those individuals, Vietnam vets, my father-in-law, Quezon Marine, if you're familiar with Quezon, you know, yeah, for sure. you know 5,000 wow. Marines surrounded by, you know, almost 20,000, you know, North Vietnamese Army that yeah, he yeah. was there, right? So he understands wow. close air support too, right? Yeah. And so when I got the the go, the green light to go to Afghanistan, you know, they both independently of the, each other, you know, called to, to have a sit down, talk with me about, about combat expectations management. And, hey, this is the real deal. So now I've earned uh, the right to listen to them, for them to open up and share. And, you know, they share with a, a whole host of things, but, you know, I'll, I'll share maybe two things. Uh, you know, my uncle told me, he goes, you know, the things that keep you up at night and, and causes nightmares and causes you to lose your mind, it's not the things that you have to do, but the things that you didn't have to, but you chose to anyway. Right? That's not in textbook. No, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's experience, you know. Yeah. And, you know, my father-in-law talked about the clarity of mind, you know, don't, don't be upset. If you're upset, either happy that you're, you know, taken to the enemy or you, you're, you're in fear for your life, whatever the case may be, whatever emotion that clouds your judgment and your clarity of mind. And I, I always kept that with me. And so I tried to be as clinical as I could the whole time to, and I found that it did help, um, uh, you know, later on as, as you know, you and I, we kept going on rotations, rotations, rotations. Sure, sure. And a testament to that, too, you know, I thought I had clarity of mind, but, you know, in the back of your mind, you always worry about, you know, is this going to be my time to, you know, to, to get shot or to right. get fragged or catch a, uh, you know, a roadside bomb or whatever. And I remember uh, one deployment, I can't tell you when, but I remember when it clicked, when it's like, you know what, if I'm dead, I'm dead. People say that, but when you internalize it, it's two different things. Sure. And I remember when I when it clicked where I really, truly didn't care. I said it many times before uh -huh. when it really clicked. Wow, talk about clarity of mind. I was so much sharper on the X. For sure. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, 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 yeah, I was like, yeah, those, those dudes was right. But I thought I was good. But when I, when it clicked with him. So, you know, make a long story short as far as what you asked me. Uh, but that was my that's my first experience. It wasn't actually going there. It's the prep, you know, from from veterans, right? Yeah. Real you know, combat veterans. Happened to be my uncle and father-in-law. Um, but so when we got there. Man, compare and contrast, right? We had the 113, we had the plugger, you know, we had oh, all right, these right. things. And then you get in country, here, here's the 117, never seen it before. Yeah. Here's a Garmin GPS from whatever sports store, you know, here's right. a Mark 7. So the things that do your job, how you communicate, how you target, and how you find out where you're at and, and you know, find, fix the enemy. Yeah, Those three things, the primary job, new equipment in country. Figure that shit out. Yeah, that's that's not usually good. Yeah, you, yeah. Want to, yeah, you want to know that stuff before you get there for sure. Yeah. yeah. So and so, you know, I tie that back into Bosnia. You know, like, hey man, you know, if you wait till last minute, you only got a minute, right? So right. this time, right. wait. Hey, whatever time I got is what I got. Let me figure this. Shit.
out, you know. So uh, me and uh, eight Martins, you know, we fly in on a C1, a C-17. There's only two of us there. Uh, C-17 land, uh, some forklift takes some cargo off, uh, and they drive off in the darkness. He and I get out with all our bags, C-17 button up taxis and fly away. Now we can use Uzbekistan at whatever clock in the morning. It's pitch black dark. There's no terminal or nothing. It's just, you know, it's an old Wait, silver base. Nobody, nobody here to pick you up? <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, my dude. God. I'm like, dude, like, what is going on? You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, so technically this is my third deployment in 2001. You know, I did Bosnia, Kuwait, but first combat deployment. Sure. And we're walking with all our kit. We go to a little bit of house. And I mean, like a one bedroom shack type house, you know, sitting way off in the corner. Kind of saw a silhouette, you know, and they had any lights on. It's just like a silhouette that was less dark than the darkness of the sky. Sure. And uh, we go over there, we open up the door that's in the middle, and this one dude sitting in a in a chair in the middle of the room with this old, poorly lit, dim light, you know. And he speaks no English, and we speak no Uzbek, and trying to figure out what's going on. And it was just like, what, what is going on here? It's like a bad movie. Yeah, you know, we hear some quads and some ATVs, you know, coming up and. We we'll go outside and finally here's the here's the SL teams with some with some vehicles come pick us up, you know. So that's a me and Abe's experience. But it was a good thirty minutes, like you know, trying to figure out what, what you know, WFO, you know, what what the hell. Yeah. If I did, I mean, I, you'd be surprised how many people have that same exact story. Like they're like, all right, get on this plane, uh, go into this far off land, and just get off the plane and then just figure it out, you know. And then you know you don't really have any guidance, and it's it's so weird how. But that's the way it was, though. I mean, the, it was so – it was all kind of new to everybody because, I mean, we like you said, we haven't been in war since Desert Storm. So, you know, we're all just trying to figure it out. So yeah. so they picked you up. And then uh, – now, so you were – did you guys support the SF guys when you were there, or did they just take you over somewhere else, or how would that work? Yeah, so also I was aligned with uh, ODA 5th Group, and I was ultimately assigned to ODA 542. So, oh, nice. So, yeah, so went to ISOFAC, uh, went there. Uh, they said, hey, you're on this team. And there was sorry tech piece there, you know, before I got there. So, you know, Tim Stamey, um, oh, yeah. uh, Steve Tomont, you know, all those all those dudes, right? You know, those names. Guys Northern been, Lions, legends, yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So those guys been in country already. I think Buddy Mac, uh, okay. Max Boris, you know, those dudes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so, they, you know, they've been an ISO fact for a while. And so I was assigned to a team and I said the lottery, that team's ready to go. And then I forget who it was. I got bumped. Like, hey, bro, I've been here a couple of weeks, man. You just got here a couple of days ago. I'm taking your team. I'm like, <laughs> hey, fair enough, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the radio, man. So, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I ultimately, I went to ODA 542. I got there to say, here's your team. And they're like, man, who the F are you? I'm like, hey, I'm your e type Like, I don't even know e type Air Force, dude. And team started like, man, I've been calling airstrikes long you've been in the Air Force. Get out of my tent. Really? I'm like, hey, you know, that may be true, but I'm not leaving the tent, man. I'm I'm you tag, I'm signed to you. So I can stand here, you show me a cot, man. You know, and again, I'm, dude, I'm 23 years old, I think. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're young, man. You know, yeah. I had style sergeant on, made style sergeant first time testing. So not not to brag, but what I'm trying to say is I had style sergeant on for like five months. Right. And it wasn't like, you know, it's my eighth time testing. I was, brand new like still a, five years. right You're still young still a new guy kind of essentially yeah uh, right and you know we got these dudes you know you know 18 years deep in sf you got this kid showing up hey i'm your you know hey i'm from the government i'm here to help you know get, get <laughs> yeah. out of right you know <laughs> let's <scram. laughs> so so i get there uh one of the team guys like hey man sit your stuff over there i set my stuff down man i talk to him i pull out my 117 start trying to figure it out pull out my and start working on my kit and trying to figure it out. And, you know, I guess I looked at me like, Hey man, this guy, it's all about business, man. He's like trying to take care of his crap, you know? And, you know, by the end of the day, man, they're all good. I'm like, Hey man, I'll show you around, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you got, you got to prove who you are sometime. But, but again, yeah. the contrast, right. You know, we two contrast points again, the, the, for the theme is, you know, we had a 117 analog, if you will, radio to the, I'm sorry, 113 analog radio to the 117. Right. PSN 11 to the plug, you know, to the, to the, uh, garment, you know, this is. Yeah. And they, they don't, they're not even, they don't really even resemble each other. I mean, frankly, I mean, like the 117 was like, a, a, it's so much more intricate and there's so many more capability. Yeah. I, was like, I can't imagine yeah, what you're going through. Crazy, I can't right? what you're thinking. Yeah. 
And then, you know, this the old school, new school, you know, guys probably said on the other podcast, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we got, you know, career war, uh, you know, B, B-52s dropping the latest and greatest J-Down, right? Mm-hmm. Right, we right. The latest and greatest satellite radios that just came out on our back and we're on horseback. Right, exactly. You, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, we're, we're, we're linked to satellites fighting fighting guys in the mountains on foot. Yeah. Right. So that that, con- that contrast again, you know, the the details of that, and and just understanding your 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 skill set, understanding your people. Uh, so man, I had the best cross training there. You know, I uh, got to really uh, isolate with the team, and we had uh, cross training. So for three days, we did medical live tissue training from. Nice tricks to needle de- uh, chest decompressions to promote our artery on, you know, on authorized animals, you know, then we did comm training, you know, I, I led the close air support training. We did sniper training. We did, you know, uh, explosives and charges, you know, so man, talk about a brand new air force one Charlie four, you know, learn a lot. It was, it was, it was great again. Yeah. How lucky training. man to get all that, uh, to get exposure to all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It was fun. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And, and you know, just to summarize, what we did the uh, Mo did did the first uh, overland infill into Afghanistan. Uh, came out, did a proof of concept with that. Met up with some special mission units from the British uh, government. And leave it at that, and then uh, yeah, yeah. came back to Uzbek, and then uh, we were, I think, I think the first Americans into Orgun E. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely first team to settle there, and so again, right out of a. Um, uh, a story go down to Bagram refit and we were on, I think, Pavlos and uh, we had the Toyota pickup trucks from, you know, Toyota of Nashville quad, right, right. and, uh, you know, all pimped out, you know, told the trucks with all the modifications and yeah. two o'clock in the morning. And uh, I talked to the team sergeant. I say like, team sergeant, like, dude, you have to let me ride this four wheeler off the back of this helicopter. Like, <laughs> I would never get the chance to do this again, you know, so. Right. Here we are in the middle of nowhere, you know, coming in through the mountains at pitch black dark. I got B1, uh, B1s overhead, you know, circling on comms, helicopters going, and they're looking at, you know, DZ, make sure things clear. These helos come in, land, and here comes, you know, off the back of the, the quad, and, you know, with a radio on my back. And yeah. Like, yeah, man, I thought it was the cast me out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and we got out the helicopter and, you know, ready for some action, you know, for the Taliban to come out and sure. you know, fly, you know, helicopters leave and it's like pitch black dark. And, you know, we met with some, some OJ people went to our safe house and that was it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I it's hate so that cool. so much when it's like, you're ready to rock. And then it's just nothing. This is uneventful. You're like, all right, let's go to bed. And then, mm. Yeah. 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 It's time to go to sleep. <laughs> Organy had to be pretty austere at that time. I mean, I can't imagine it being built up at all at that time. No, the uh, Oregon need people don't know what's not. It was a went to some dude's house and like, hey, uh, you know, be someone coming to us and like, hey man, your house is worth, I don't know, half a million dollars. I give you uh, ten mil for it. You like sold. Like, I don't need to go through the house. I may maybe get some pictures, maybe get my family, but <laughs> <laughs> everything else you can keep. He just puts so. his hat on, just rolls out. He's like, I'm a <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so equivalently, like, hey man, here's here's some money for your house. And yeah. guys like grab his family, like they're, they're gone, right? They're they're set. So, uh, Orguni was not Orguni. Orguni was a was a house. I had a, a large uh, uh, walled in yard. That's yeah. that's where that's where ODA five four two set up. And so, uh, you know, we we were the um, the catalyst for creating a G force, right? So contrast, you know, my Ranger days, then at two seven five Alpha Company. And then later, uh, BRD, you know, because your RD guys got reassigned to some do some cooler, cooler stuff. Right. And so right. The battalions had to pick up and stand up the own reconnaissance. Mm-hmm. So I was the uh, BRD re- battalion reconnaissance detachment, uh, right. Jake uh, ETAC at the time. But contrast that to Afghanistan, you know, ODA team, where now we are creating and building a G force, yep. guerrilla force. And all the things that go within that, you know, so it's not just a jump off, kick in the doors, bang, bang, pull the trigger. Now you're looking at the the thought process, how you shape, I ain't saying hearts and minds, but how you shape thought. How do you manage a force to do something? How, how do you procure that? 
right? And, and and I think that later on helped me as a leader as well, you know, looking at how that process works and, you know, how you do those things that takes time. There's no instant gratification or a um, guaranteed outcome of success. Sure. Yeah, Based you don't know what you're getting. I mean, you could – who knows who these guys are that are even volunteering or they're, they're, they're recruiting. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a crapshoot. Yeah. And, and, and to uh, – at the risk of not losing my security clearance, which I still have, is, you know <laughs> – uh, but some of the, the people we're working with and, and the people we're paying in country to to work with us and, you know, seeing all that real time. Right. And and yeah. understand, man, talk about what I, I guess I was 23, maybe 22 to see that man. Talk about, you know, formative like a lot of new stuff. Yeah. A lot of new things, a lot of high level things that you probably didn't imagine you would even probably didn't uh, it's same way with me. Like when I first got exposed to it, it was like, I didn't even know it existed. You know, the stuff like that was like, what is this? What, who are these guys? And yeah, it's a, yeah. it's an, yeah, it's an amazing experience for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, I don't say a lot of people, uh, but some people don't know that, you know, Anaconda was not originally called Anaconda. It was task force hammer and anvil. Okay. And it was supposed to happen in uh, January, not, March. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we had three ODAs, one in Orguni, one in Kaos, and one in, Ar- in uh, Gardez. Okay. And those ODAs jobs, one of them, mine, Orguni, was to build, establish the guerrilla force, set the conditions, take those guerrilla force to help shape. And then the other soft elements that came along with the conventional elements, uh, they were to uh, do what they did. Okay. And Task Force Hammer and Anvil was us setting conditions in around the, the you know, the the valley and where everything, everything took place. And the hammer was the force that came in to root out the Taliban. My ODA in the Naka Valley was the anvil. Oh, okay. We get the if you look at the demographic, they're supposed to funnel down into this valley sure. and then open up to the Naka Valley which is a greater opening and yeah, me yeah. and the was on the backstop on the ridge line and we we're the hammer. So when you guys came in to crush, we we're going to be the anvil for the backstop and we we're going to crush it together. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, right. and because of the three letter agencies we're working with and how we we're having security again, we, we put like, we purchased security from other people who are not us. Right. Sure. Um, uh, one of the teams had a hit put out on them. Really? Yeah. So, which was common. All of, all of us are working with the same type individuals, different individuals, yeah. different individuals, same MO, and they rule the area, you know, because the, the the Afghan government stops outside of Kabul. Yeah, Everything yeah. else is owned by other people, right? For sure. So for sure. We were tagged with other people. And okay. the other person with the other ODA is like, hey, um, one SF guy got shot in the chest, one got shot in the leg, guy got shot in the leg, bled out, died. Um, had a similar incident with our guys for us going back and forth where they disappeared, came back, you know, so very, uh, shaky ground, you know, you're trying to do a combat yeah. house, but you're not sure if your friends are really friends, right? Oh yeah. And so that's why Task Force Hammer and Anvil got pushed to the right, uh, to no, to March. Oh, okay. Because we're trying to say, do we have the conditions that we need to have to like, pull this off? No doubt. I mean, you could have been walking into a, a huge ambush. I mean, they could have been just setting you up for, yeah, man. Yeah. So it's probably better off you guys held off. Right. But yeah. but it's not even walking to it. We we eat and slept with them. So, you know, it was 12 man ODA with uh, some OJ people and the people force that we lived with, we lived with these people. Mm-hmm. They were hundred strong. Easy. Yeah. So we had and one you never know, hundred. like it's just tricky because you never know, like it, it could just take one or two of those guys to not be with you. You know, they could be, you know, just a plant or some sort of, you know, traitor or something. So yeah. Or it could be the the lead uh the lead um mafia boss, if you will. Um uh, is like, hey, I don't care about loyalty, I care about money, right? So sure. It's, it's yeah. happened up north, right? So Oh, for sure. Yeah. So he he's the warlord. He he runs everything. So right. He can he can say like this and all one hundred people turn. Yep. yep. Right. So uh long long of a short, uh that that uh warlord who authorized to hit, you know, we played alone, but he disappeared later on, right? After okay. <laughs> after Anaconda, right? But those were the conditions. The point is those are the conditions we operate in, you know. Yeah. It wasn't that a fob, you know, uh um it wasn't just on the X to come back, you know, we were living with the G force, right? And understand yeah, yeah. that that cycle, that mental picture of 
you know, who's your friend, who's your foe. And then oh, man, it had to be, you guys had, to, did you guys, so just a quick, just for my own edification, did you guys have like your own internal security? Like, did you got, were you guys like, okay, you, half of us will be up at all times or we'll at least put you pulling guard duty or something or like, I'd be nerve wracking to, to not know, you know, if you could trust the guys that are with you, especially in that, like, especially that early in the war, you know, like it right. seemed, who knows who's who at that point, you know, so that right. had to be like a little, well, stay in the same little nerving. We all stayed in the same room and we had one American up all at, at all times, you know, one say, radio, yeah. radio's always up. And, you know, uh, actually one night, you know, after the other ODA that got ambushed, you know, very similar thing happened. The warlord and all his men, they left, just disappeared. Wow. And then things happen. So yeah. you know, there's a uh, disagreement on our on our side a week or two later. And uh, I'm sleeping and wanted to get the guys like, Zach, get up, man, get up. I'm like, what's up, what's up, man? We need aircraft right now. So I'm going to get on the horn, you know. As I'm requesting Cass, I'm asking why, you know. Right. Ask you first, ask why later. Yeah. Uh, and oh, by the way, you know, there was no 1972 and talk to the ASOC, right? There was no ASOC. There was no... I've requested uh, close air support uh, assets like probably five, six different ways, you know. Yeah. Whatever British or U.S. thing was flying overhead or whatever through the B team, through the SF, through, I mean, it was the Wild Wild West. There was sure. very limited inf- infrastructure, if anything. Yeah. But anyway, like what's going on? It's like, hey, man, the warlord who slept in the same compound with us. When I say compound, it's not a very, it's a house. Sure. With the wall in, so it's not a big place. He's right. gone out of his, his room. And the 60 dudes yeah. that stay here the whole time and in and around the area, they're gone. It's two oh, o'clock. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole team's up, man. We're on the rooftop, you know. Uh, make a long story shorter, had B1s overhead, did some show of force, you know, at mock whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sonic boom, rattled the town a couple of times, you know. So, hey, man, you – and actually, we had agreement, you know, I'll talk to the teams like, hey, man, like, how far are we going? And the team and the, and the OGA guys like, hey, man, we're not going to be strung up and all this other bullshit. Like, you know, we're going to go out blaze of glory. So, like, all right. And so I talked to the aircraft. I said, hey, man, all of us here on the grants, when it comes to it, you will drop inside the compound, <laughs> like everything you got. So we get to the point where we're hand to hand level this place i mean yeah. and it's that real you know so at 20 what 22 years old like dude like all right man this is this is how we roll man. so uh yeah and it's funny too uh um i forget the guy's name man he happened to his team happened to come through at the same time so we had two jtacs and our team oh, starts yeah. like all right we want one jtac on this part of the uh the the roof we want one jtac on this part of the roof We're like dude it's not a 240 man it's not a, <laughs> right. It's not a secondary <laughs> fire position. We were yeah. better for working together, right? Yeah, yeah. I gotta know what he's doing so I don't do the same thing or step on him or what. <laughs> yeah, we compliment each other. No, no, like damn, he's our team sorry. Like, damn, bro. I know you're old school team sorry, man, but let us you don't know who's there It's not yeah, a yeah. <laughs> it's not a Mark 19 man where you need to spread us right. out. Yeah, sectors of fire and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um uh, man, it did so whatever sort of... happened, like, what was the deal? Why'd they bug out like that? Like, what were they uh, doing? Yeah, conflict of, uh, not get too much details, but weren't happy about what was going on. Oh, and okay. you know, maybe conversations and stuff like that. And, and maybe some other interest, um, came back the next day along with people in the town of Oregoni. They knew the Americans was within this building right outside of town. What a line of, I don't know, 75 people. And they're there to bring us whatever they thought they shouldn't have had. You know, so I ran B1s at Mach whatever, Sonic, you know, boom, at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I know they're coming, and still, <laughs> yeah. you, you feel like, oh, man, you oh, know. Yeah. So, you know, they woke up in the night, oh, hey, man, this this rifle that I had, I probably shouldn't have this, more. <laughs> whatever, this mortar, oh, I got three grenades, you know. So guys were like, it's like, uh, you know, coming to. Uh, you scared you know, the contraband out of them. Yeah. <laughs> like coming to church, man, and, and, you know, like, hey, I want to repent. And so <laughs> we had a lot of people were like, I don't know what this is, but maybe I shouldn't have it. I want to give it to you. Make sure that you don't, you know, make me disappear. So <laughs> right, uh, right. Well, it's all good. Man. It's just, so it's like a lot of, you know, lessons learned, you know. Sure. Just, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Man, I remember, um, you know, 
Task Force Hammer and Anvil that became Anaconda, you know, we're looking at the plan with the OJ guys, and I was like, man, like, dude, this is complicated. And I'm still a young guy, and he's like, yeah. man, this plan was built by professionals. I was like, yeah, so was the Titanic, but Noah's art was pretty simple, and it, and it worked. <laughs> <You guess so. laughs> and and I'm not laughing that, you know, our plan went the way it did, but Anaconda went the way it did, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I was like, dude, yeah. this is a complicated plan, you know, and then everyone's too too cool for school. But, you know, just to, I want to say wrap up Afghanistan, but, you know, not to uh, make this podcast a four-hour podcast that no one listened <laughs> to, but, um, you know, we finally got in place and, you know, you see who's who in the zoo when, when certain things happen. Um, we moved into another position and... You know, watching watching our guys do work on the ridge line. You know, uh, from from the day to the night to the middle of the night to the next morning. You know, and I'm on the yeah. I have front row tickets, man. I didn't drop anything during Anaconda because uh, obviously the plan didn't work and they didn't funnel through to my valley. But man, I'm watching you know B-52s dropping what I call tit tacks. You know, you see them glistening off the the sun, and I'm like, dude, oh, yeah. someone's getting jacked up. And into the night where the ridge line silhouette is highlighted because of the explosions on the back end. Right. You know, like, man, you know, guys putting in work and hearing one side, it comes from the aircraft, but I couldn't hear the JTAC, you know, our type B comes, you know, right. the ridge line. just, just seeing that. And, um, from, you know, they call me the goat, not the greatest of all times, but actually like a, the animal goat. <laughs> sure. um, <laughs> so we're doing our special reconnaissance and, you know, we're climbing these mountaintops base campus, like 8,800, 8,500. We're climbing to 10, 10, eight, to, you know, freezing our ass off. Yeah. And so two SF guys and me would go up and we get compromised. What you gotta do? Come down, find another peak. Well, yeah, yeah. the next peak is not the same two SF guys, two freshmen. Hey, you're oh, a yeah, yeah. but hey, who's going again? Right. So, you know, after the third or fourth summer, like, dude, man, you're you're a goat. And like, good thing I'm in shape, you know, but uh and I, That's I will lot, yeah. That somebody I was just talking to somebody else about that like the life of JTAC is like you you don't have the luxury of sitting out a mission, you know, like they can rotate in and out, but you, you're the only guy there that has that kind of that power, that, that, uh, capability. So yeah, you got to go. And you know, the yeah. Rangers was jealous, you know, you do platoon platoon plus hit. Yeah. And so, you know, you got guys who are missing out, you know, every third or fourth mission they get to go on, but you know, we get to go on every mission and, you know, guys right. are jealous. Like, Damn, man, you get to go on everything. Like, yeah, yeah. it's good, good <laughs> and bad. I, 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 yeah, I, I yeah. was, I would say this, you know, uh, talk about discernment. So uh, one of the people who found out who was in Iraq later, uh, I was tasked to do SR and say, hey, it's going to be at this location within your valley. Uh, once the things line up, you clear it to call airstrike. And so for three days, we did pattern our life, you know, so I'm at 10,600 feet looking at this, see the kids uh, watching or playing, playing games, about, about 12, 15 kids to see the women probably about four or five of them, you know, doing their washing, the daily chores, all that, you know, for about three or four days. And finally, the vehicles that they said was going to come with, with the number of fighting age men, um, well, the, all, everything matched, like, this is the dude, right? So yeah. I got aircraft overhead, and they're looking at the target, and it's like, hey, man, I asked the ground commander, I said, dude, like, this is what's going on. He goes, Zach, it's your call. And the reason why I stopped to tell the story, I thought about my my uncle. Right. So it's not the things you have to do, the things that you had the opportunity not to. Sure. And so I was asking, hey, you know, you know, is this guy worth the lives of those other people? And I can't definitely say yes. All right. So this guy go, I didn't drop, uh, even though the nice. aircraft gun, hey, let's go, let's go. Oh, of course called they were, the, yeah. Yeah, I called the mission off, I didn't drop, you know. So some people may say, Oh man, you're you're weak, whatever. Mm, don't think so, but uh you know, this guy, I, I don't think so. No, I mean, that's, that's your job as a JTAC to, to make that discernment, to make, to, to limit, limit collateral damage. I mean, we can't just go out there and just wholesale kill, you know, civilian, you know, have civilian casualties like that. I think you made it, uh, that's a perfectly fine decision for sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. Well, you know how it is in the beginning of the war, man, it's the first war we had since forever. So guys trying to get their bona fides, right. You sure. Know, sure. Um, and, uh, you know, which even speaks more, more highly of you to make that decision because you weren't like, well, this could be my time to get my, you know, I may never get a chance to drop again Yeah. and you didn't take it and you, you made the right decision. I mean, that's, that's commendable, man. I think. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. But yeah, man, I could talk on forever that first, uh, Afghan, uh, uh, deployment, man, a lot of lessons learned, but yeah, 
again, it's the compare and contrast, man, you know, how, how things work and, you know, uh, you know, we had our dark soft and light soft, you know, black, soft, black ops and white ops. Right. And we're not sure. talking. We're trying to call airstrikes on each other. You know, later right. get a deep brief. There's like, Hey man, uh, this is one team trying to call airstrike, but Hey, we got this blocking position, these guys with beers and machine guns and, <laughs> you know, somebody trying to call airstrike. It was, it was our ODA, right. You know, no one's talking. Yeah. So, yeah, no yeah. One caught it, so likely we didn't, uh, we didn't get dropped on. Yeah. That was a very, that was a touchy, subject or situation in the very beginning because there was like, like you said the comm wasn't there and there were just people everywhere just doing everything and it was kind of a little loose but yeah we're lucky we didn't suffer some more fracture side than we did for sure absolutely yeah. absolutely so that's really awesome that you got to go to an oda out of the 82nd not not just another you know not just with an 82nd unit not that that would have been a bad thing but like it's pretty cool that you got to you know that they needed that many because I mean, we talked about this before too like the, there's so many ODAs out there that didn't have ETAX at the time. And like it was tech P's really got a great opportunity to kind of fill those empty positions. I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. Luck and Tommy, man. Uh, again, going contrast, go from armor, you know, infantry, mechanized infantry, first right. ASOS, uh, first infantry division, second ASOS to, you know, airborne to now soft, you know, ODA yeah. invasion 2001. And then get back, you know, I turned down my lone walk orders to special mission unit in Fort Bragg. And then it's, hey, do you want to go over here to the to the uh, SF teams here at Bragg? But you remember, you tried out for Ranger Type B, and you can go there too. Like, I'm going to try something different. So then I PCS'd uh, in 2002 after getting back from uh, uh, Afghanistan invasion. And uh, PCS'd to Fort Lewis to okay. two uh, second Ranger yep. Type B. And so... And then in 2003, you know, Iraq happens. And I was fortunate enough to evade Iraq with Alpha Company, Second Ranger Battalion. You know, okay. And wow. I'll, I'll save that. I'll save that story for another podcast, man, because, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking for another another hour and a half on that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> is it a long one? Is that why you don't want to? It's long, man. It's, you know, a lot of lessons learned. I just want to do a service. If we, if we have time, another time, do it, you know, do it sure. justice about the lessons learned versus just glossing over it. But, you know, okay. um, yeah, you know, going into 275 and uh, we thought we had Saddam in one location before we had ground forces, you know, deep in and was able to, you know, call air strikes with some A-10s and on a special public guard and, you know, go into the city and, you know, we're going to do a highlight for doing a highlight teaser trailer for next time. But <laughs> you know, right, right. Hey, remember, we're all together at a certain location and we're going to jump into Saddam International. Until we find out that, you know, three of the 10 C-17s were going to be shot down before green light. But, like, hmm, I want a mustard stain, but not that bad, right? Yeah, yeah. right, right. It's like, who's going to get who's gonna get shot down? Yeah, is it that yeah. important? Right. And so, you know, and then, you know, we all went there to Saddam International, and then we started running our ops out of there. So, uh, uh, but, yeah, we, we saved that story for another time. Okay. All right. <laughs> So then, uh, so you were 275. So what, if you, since we're skipping over 275, how, I mean, do you have anything else you want to talk about as far as like when you went to the Rangers, uh, um, that experience there, like what, how did that shape you on to go to other things, you know, like. Everything from, from a tactician to a leader, uh, you know, I was there from 02 to 08, 07, 08, 275. Okay. So, you know, invaded Iraq 2003. The next year I went back to Afghanistan. Uh, uh, I was with Pat Tillman when he was killed, you know, Arizona oh, okay. rock player. He was alpha company. Uh, wow. so, uh, we did serve with him for almost two years before he was killed no in, kidding. April, in April. Yeah. Um, a senior pitcher, he and I, uh, doing the invasion of uh, Iraq yeah. in 2003. Uh, but I was with him that morning, you know, when things happened, you know, it was on the, on the border of, uh, Pac and Afghan and. You know, some things going down. Again, I'll say that those stories for the Ranger days, because a lot of them, but uh, I was joking with them. So, hey, man, it should have been an ETAC. You can fly back on a helicopter and get ready for the next mission, not the drive back, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I was with, uh, I think it was second platoon. We flew back to refit, and I think first platoon had the drive back. And uh, it's one private lane, man. And he was like, man, Chief Zach, I mean, Sergeant Zach, I'm going to quit the Army. I said, why is that? It sucks. I'm like, hey, man, you know. No one's shooting at us, you know, you, you get to go. We got a hot child. We, we're all right, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> that morning I said that, and I was messing with Pat. And then, you know, a few hours later, you know, we got a call that, you know, everything was going on. I flew back out uh, to the site. Everything was over when I got there. Um, yeah. 
but I was with the platoon sergeant, uh, Sergeant Godick. He and I were picking up, you know, pieces of pack from the ground, putting in plastic zippies to make sure we, and, you know, uh, private lane, which I brought him up. He took two rounds to the chest. Luckily, he had his vest on. Yeah, yeah. One round to the leg. You know, he's medevaced. Uh, Lieutenant Utlau, uh, who was a PL, um, great, great young lieutenant. Uh, he caught a round and went through the back of his, uh, from right to left lat, underneath the body armor, but did not pierce his chest cavity. Talk oh, about, thank God. Talk about lucky, you know, but. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Just a flesh room, right? I mean, I stopped my toe. I'm about to pass out, but you know, have a flesh room go through and through. Uh, yeah, we call we're calling him lucky, but yeah, <laughs> he probably didn't feel very lucky. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and 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 ate an AK-47 round. He took a AK-47 round in the mouth, knocked his teeth out, went through his lips, but it what? went this way, right? Holy crap! Right. So, um, so again, like Rangers, another time. Uh, but yeah, uh, went back to Afghanistan. Uh, with the Rangers again, uh, then in 05, went to Iraq with the Rangers. Uh, that special missions unit that I tried out for years ago, yeah, yeah. Uh, they needed a ETAC because of the casualty rate. And so I became the eighth guy on the eight-man uh, D-boy team Okay. in Mosul. Talk about phenomenal. Oh, man, Mosul too. Gee whiz, how'd that go? Another story. Awesome, dude. <laughs> Yeah, eighth guy on 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 that particular force, our, our authorities and the level of people looking at and man, yeah, yeah. wow, eye opening, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he's on TV now, so I'm not out on him. But my my sergeant major was Cal Lamb, so a lot of people know Cal Lamb, Viking Tactical. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Viking Tactical, big company. He's on the History Channel. That's my sergeant major. Um, oh no, kidding. Or, yeah, so uh, you look him up, and so man, again. Man, very blessed, very fortunate, right time, right place, just sure. to stumble into things, you know, and, and to, to, to be able to experience them. Hey.